So with this, uh, we've had the chance to look at the, the works of art made by most of the workshops during this week, but you haven't been able to receive anything from the, the poetry and songwriting group because we haven't shared anything yet. So I'd like to invite our whole uh, writing group to come up, bring a chair or a cushion, whatever you'd like to sit on, and we're going to make a semicircle here at the front, and one by one we'll present what we've been doing. So here we are, we are um, the majority of the writing workshop <laughs> and we focused this week on doing a lot of different exercises and connecting, uh, being mindful to our whole experience of the creative process as well as generating, um, generating lovely bits of, of poetry and music. And so what we did the last two days was have some structured, um, structured exercises and then free time to create something and then we just all came back and shared what we did. So today we're just going to share something that for each or groups of us came up um, during this time and we're going to start with Paul. So we'd like to invite Paul to come into the center or we could just... <laughs> Or may, maybe Matt, Matt, could you pull the microphone for Paul? Yeah, sure. Okay. Definitely. <laughs> um, you just kind of hold it out there, but I don't know whether they can hear me. Um, this is a, a very short piece uh, that I chose to do. Um, it's a couple of lines from a poem written by Kabir, who was a 16th century Hindu mystic and poet, and I added some melody and a little music. Uh, it's uh, two short verses, two short choruses, and you'll get the chorus, and uh, any help would be very much appreciated. in absolute awe of their movements. What a God we have. What a God. What a God. What a God we have. What a God, what a God, what a God we have.
This is called tree metaphor. Plenty of good metaphors start with a tree. I guess you can chalk it up to their uh, ubiquity. Listeners are likely to be familiar with the many properties of a tree and the things a tree does. So applying symbolic weight to those things is a readily digestible concept for most people. To branch out, you say. Ah, yes, I say. I have seen what branches do outwardly. For in, uh, another example, a tree grows from a seed in the ground. When it is still young, though no longer a sapling, it is recruited into an elite space program for the best and brightest trees. It uproots itself for many years, training for its mission. The g-force of the centrifugal, um, some research needed, wor whirly-majig, uh, <laughs> scares away a family of robins living in a hollow recess in its trunk. The test on the treadmill with the wires pressed into the crevices in its barks and ants scattering for safety. The tree feels scared for what is being called upon to do, but proud at the chance to do it. It comes from a country, small, not known historically for its scientific achievements. The tree has a tattoo on its left arm, the name of a rabbit whose memory is burrowed deep within its heart. It has a favorite movie, Caddyshack. <laughs> you understand because you have seen trees before, how they live and grow. Then you'll understand that when the tree gets to space and lands on the distant planet, it was sent to explore how its branches are weighed down by the, under the force of the increased gravity relative to its home planet. For the sake of this metaphor, its home planet is Earth. For the sake of this metaphor, the tree is a girl. For the sake of this metaphor, the blue I see is greenish and the blue you see is light pink. Now that we're on the same page. See how the leaves drop from its branches. Um, optional line to be read. Uh, landing with a soundless thud onto the ashen surface of a place far from its blue home. And long after the tree returns home, reroots itself, settles in, gathers rings, grows old, dies. See what happens on this faraway planet when a seed pod sprouts and the planet turns billions and billions of cycles of shade and light. Uh, behold, a world of metaphors. Dear Ty, dear Sangha, um, so we did something called automatic writing, and I picked up a little bits of wisdom from that that I wrote down and turned it into a piece. Part one, random thoughts. Life is about little choices. Happiness is about choosing correctly. I have everything I need to be happy. But I'm not really good at figuring that out. Am I alone in this? 
Yesterday, I saw my anger was a mask for sadness. But anger felt better because it wasn't vulnerable. Today, I woke up and had a realization. Hey, thank God, I don't have to fix everything immediately. But I wrote it down on my hand because it's easy to forget. city and one night Oh, it's night in the city You were always alone The air of love is even on top of the snow So we did a fair bit of writing yesterday by just taking books of poetry, opening a page and pointing your finger to it, and then either singing it or using that as a prompt to write something. So this, um, this sort of came from that. The first half is actually the lines that I found, and the second half is the, the response. Does your heart No, that's not how it starts. <laughs> Does your heart have room for me? Does your heart have room for me? And the sunflowers and the open field and the great red sun sharing her heart with the world does your heart have room for me? But really I should ask myself Does my heart have room for me? Does my heart have room For the sunflowers and the open field And the great red sun Bearing its red heart to the world does my heart have room for me? I must answer yes Even if I have to fake it until I make it I answer yes So, um, this is a song that I wrote um, that I kind of always had a blueprint of in my mind. 
uh, and being here this weekend and all my experiences and friends I've met have kind of kind of filled in the words for me. Okay, thanks. Um, I did have a, a request from a, a special friend. Apparently we have a birthday today, so this song is this song is uh, going to be dedicated to Nancy for her birthday. <laughs>
Dear Thai, dear Sangha, um, this is from the same exercise of um, choosing a line from poetry. And um, so these are a few short poems, and the first line is by the poet Mary Oliver, and the other lines of each poem are inspired by the first line written by me. Um, so, poem one. This is how you pray, by seeing the sacred around and greeting it with love. Poem two. But the seed has been planted and is sure to blossom in time if I allow a little light, a little freedom. Poem three. I was sorry for the fear. I had only said, hello friend, to the squirrel, but perhaps not in the right language. Poem four. I couldn't walk anymore, and then I walked some more. Never having been here, I didn't know how far it was to the top. It was worth it to reach the peak of the hidden mountain. Poem five. I could just see the eyes because the lights in the barn were low. So the newborn brown calf would have a peaceful arrival. Dear community, I also chose uh, a book of Kabir poetry as my inspiration, and it was in fact the, the biography of Kabir himself which I chose, and how he made his way to um, the Hindu faith. He was stepped on. What drew him to make himself a carpet so that he could be initiated? You can't lock up religion. People will be moved, and they are moved. They might try to keep you out, say, you are this, not that. But there are many ways into faith. I also <clears throat> used a poem, one that actually I read many times but never struck me quite the same way um, until this weekend. And the poem is The Fire That Consumes My Brother by Thich Nhat Hanh. So I wrote from that poem. The taser that hits him stings my white body too. The pistol that kills him murders this white soul too. Oh my brothers, oh my sisters, oh my dear beloved daughter, dark and smart, beware the mindlessness that spreads over this land. I could not bear to mourn you too. Um, I am new to all of this, um, I've never been to anything like this, and one of the assignments was to write a love letter to yourself, which was surprisingly difficult, um, but I, this is my love letter to this community, to the Sangha, uh, for what, uh, what you have uh, shared with me.
try to do it from memory, but it's only been two days, so. and I'm not that young. <laughs> Calming my wild mind is no mission for the timid. Taming my mad heart, bringing solace to the soul. I've been far away for so long I can't remember. Can you help me bring it home again? Going this alone without map or stars or compass tripping in the dark over thoughts that block the way i've been here far away for so long i can't remember can you help me bring it home again little child i can feel you at the heart of my song little girl you are with me and you need to come along i have lived a life serving needs of all the many now has come the time that the needs fulfilled are mine. But I'm far away from the woman I envision. Time to wake, to bring it home again. Little child, I can feel you at the heart of my song little girl you are with me and you need to come along calming my wild mind is no mission for the timid taming my mad heart solace to the soul. I've been far away for so long I can't remember. Can you help me bring it home again? I've been far I can't remember. Can you help me bring it home again? My name's Natalie. Um, I'm just going to demonstrate one of the exercises. Um, I took the class because I need to find, I want to find my voice again. Um, and the exercise was just to pick a book and then you just open it up and point your finger at it and you just go from there. And uh, Sister Ocean said I could do this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but she described it to fluctuate my voice um, and sort of play with the words. Um, it, this comes from Rumi. Um, this, is, this is from Rough Metaphors. And um, it's kind of perfect for me because it's, it's kind of rough. Um, so um, I'm just going to sing parts of it and see what happens. Someone said there is no dervish, or if there is a dervish, 
that dervish is not there. Look at a candle flame in bright noon sunlight. If you put cotton next to it, the cotton will burn. But its light has become completely mixed with the sun. also part of this conspiracy <laughs> to open a book and point your finger at it. I was part of the same conspiracy to open a book, point your finger at it, sing it, write it, or something it. And I picked Ty's book. I thought, yeah, I mean, you play everyone else's songs, you sing, I do anyway, and I never try to, um, but anyway, I thought maybe I could interpret um, his poem to make it um, personal for me, and I could understand it, and maybe, um, I probably don't have a lot of time left, so anyway. They gong me, you know, it's Sangha. Ty wrote this um, 60 years ago, so I guess he was 29 or 30 years old. It's called, Let Us Pray for Darkness, O Sparkling Stars. You have to warm these up, believe it or not. Do I have time for the green room? No. <laughs> no, it's gunked up with sugar and salt. Yeah. All right. You're going to use the next one. Let us pray for. I need, I, thank you, brother, but I need something, more. it's like a pacifier, yeah. I like it, thank you. <laughs> the boat is gone, great sea, pink dawn, I remain on the shore. Counting the footprints left on the sand A group of anxious men and women are here To see the boat off And to pray for the man who is going May the sea be calm and the sky Quiet, they whisper. Oh, wind, carry their prayer. And let the ocean give him the storms they need. Oh, suffering. Come here by my side. Oh, su oh, suffering, come here by my side and watch the boat's pilot. Who's contemplating sky and cloud, smile calmly at the waves and the ocean. He's not praying for the calmness of ocean and sky, but just for two arms and one heart. Oh, suffering, come here by my side. Give up your heart of 
Because thanks to you, he'll reach greatness. Because without you, he'd have been only a he forever. so much everyone for your attention so this is some of what we did um, and I understand next we're gonna get to watch a slideshow maybe yes okay so how about our group would like to invite us all to stand and bow together and then we'll make our way off yeah. Exit. thank you so much but before you go we, the audience, we in the last days, we have also prepared a song for Nancy, and that is called Happy Continuation. <laughs> we would like to perform it for you. Oh, yeah. oh no, but you know it's you. So do you all remember the lyrics, or do I have to uh, turn out the handouts? Okay, we just go spontaneously for it. One, two, three. Happy <laughs> continuation day. So next we will be uh, seeing a slideshow from the one day uh, from the one day workshop which was progressive land art and was also um, like a, a workshop on impermanence because all the art we did we offered to Mother Earth. Actually we only borrowed the material and we gave it back to her and we tried to make it beautiful and give something beautiful back to her and whatever she does with it is in our, is in, uh, that's our intention. going to have a s little surprise for you first, oh. which is a uh, short clip of our favorite teacher doing his thing. Oh, there he is. So this video is courtesy of uh, Sounds True and... Um, ABC Home, so I'll say thanks to them for, and I, I did a little um, mashing of them together, so 
Here we go. Let's see. I don't think I'm not getting any sound. <laughs> Sorry. It's, uh, Sister Ocean, can I make your computer give me sound? Oh, maybe maybe it is. Okay. All right. Let's try it. First part's quiet, so that's okay. mixing some of my tea in the ink. And when I hold the brush, I begin to breathe in. And for making this circle, I begin here. And I breathe in mindfully. So you can see my in-breath in this circle. There is a calm, there is a concentration, there is a mindfulness, and there is love. And that is what we call uh, the practice of mindful breathing. The practice of mindful breathing brings the mind home to the body and help you to be fully present, fully alive in the here and the now. And you can get in touch with all the wonders of life that are there available in the here and the now for your nourishment and healing. So we do it together. There is no self, no separate self. You are a lineage. You are a continuation. You are a, 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 a stream, like a river. You have no uh, separate self. And that is why uh, uh, mindfulness, concentration, always bring insight, and insight bring liberation and happiness. And that is why when you practice calligraphy, you can touch the insight of no self, of uh, interbeing. We are invited to, to visit the calligraphies in the spirit. Let us enjoy every step. And the calligraphies that you see may have the power to touch off the wisdom, the insight, the love that are already inherent in you and make you happy. Thanks for that message from our teacher. It's very... All right. Um, I want to see if we can try the seems like it might work so yeah. okay we'll try it and now we have we doing the regular slideshow or the land art first okay oh yeah as part of the um, as part of the exhibits um, did you already say something about that 
Let's see what happens with the sound, if we got any. That was very nourishing to be out there. Thanks everyone who has uh, participated. And now thanks to Bruce who took a lot of pictures and every one of you who, who emailed your pictures and photos and uh, came to the office and let us copy your, your memory cards, flash cards. Bruce created this, uh, just, uh, just look. I'm just going to wait a moment to see if it's down. Okay, go ahead and give it a try. We'll see how it goes.
Dear respected teacher, dear beloved community, this is the end of our heart show. Thank you for being part of it and by participating in the workshops this week, by coming to witness each other's creations and um, by being part of this community. Thank you so much. So um, we'll listen to uh, some more sounds, three more sounds of the bell, and then we'll stand to bow uh, to one another and then bow to the altar. And then we'd like to ask the help, certainly of the meditation hall team, but maybe if everyone can help us set up the mats, it will only take a few minutes. If we only have maybe five people left, it'll take quite a while. Um, but we'll be setting up for sitting meditation tomorrow morning at 6.30. And I don't know if there will still be the optional exercises tomorrow morning. Maybe not. Just sitting at 6.30. I, I, I imagine Sister Ubat will probably be here, but um, stick exercises are no. I forgot we had one request. Um, today in Deer Park in California uh, was the 49-day ceremony for our brother Fup Day who passed away 49 days ago and some of our friends wanted to sing Amazing Grace together in honor of our brother Fap Day who was 81 years old with the lovely name Young Brother given to him by Ty. So can we finish with Amazing Grace and then we'll close with Three Sounds of the Bell. Uh, we'll just do it a cappella. <laughs> dangerous through beginning last time. <laughs>